Good morning to the Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, radio listeners via St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM and other radio stations and online viewers. I'm Rolika Roche and welcome to the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today, Wednesday, November 28th, 2018. At this time, I invite the Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport and Telecommunication, the Honorable Stuart Johnson, to address you. Minister Johnson. Good morning to my colleague minister and deputy prime minister, Minister Smith, the members of the press and the viewing and listening audience. I would first want to mention an important initiative which Minister Smith and I joined to champion in the interest of education, product development, and the overall improvement of our tourism product. This is the Caribbean Tourism Organization e-workbook which is a series of tourism and environmental awareness-based lessons aimed at educating our children between the ages of 6 to 12 on the importance of tourism. This, we hope, will catch on very quickly and resonate with our children and adults alike as we must recognize that we are competing for visitor arrival and our edge will be with high level of customer appreciation as we show to our visitors and how we show to them that we are indeed high on the friendly list of countries and the need to protect our environment. The pilot project started this morning at my former school, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Primary School in Dutch Quarter, and at the Ruby La Bega Primary School in Retreat Estate, which we visited this morning to deliver some training material for the CTO program. Board Minister Smith and I taught an interactive lesson which highlighted tourism, which interacted with students and got direct feedback from them in regards to their concerns as well as a general awareness about tourism and the need for us as a people to ensure the importance of tourism maintains a high level of importance within our schools and for the future of this country. Also, while I'm on the subject of tourism, there has been a plan for some time to build a boardwalk link between the harbor and the Great Bay Boardwalk. In recent weeks and months, we have recognized the increased road traffic activity on the road to Point Blanche, and I believe in the interest of prevention above cure, we must urgently work to ensure that our cruise visitors can get an easily accessible, leisurely walk to Phillipsburg and the shopping area. We have commitments of the property owners, Bobby's Marina and Doc Martin, to facilitate the construction of the boardwalk, and my ministry will be working closely with these property owners to see the start of the construction of this link within short. The idea is to provide a safe pathway to our guests who wish to walk to Phillipsburg. As you are aware, I was able to reach across the aisle and join Member of Parliament Silveria Jacobs on her legislation for increasing the age for drinking and the purchasing of alcoholic drinks from 16 to 18. This is important to highlight for several reasons. Two of which are the first, it shows that bipartisan spirit and approach will allow us to accomplish great things in the interest of moving this country, St. Martin, forward. Secondly, the initiative is timely as we must do what we need to do as a community and as a country to reiterate underage drinking as it contributes to too many short-lived lives and the loss of opportunities for young people who after becoming hooked on alcohol at an early age find themselves in a slum with very little hope of reaching their true potential. Everyone has a role to play and I encourage each resident to sound the alarm whenever they see anyone offering alcohol to minors or if they see underage persons attempting to purchase alcohol. Another important legislation is the timeshare legislation, which is an initiative from the Honorable President of Parliament, Mrs. Sarah Westcott-Williams. For more than about three decades, the timeshare industry has provided stability to our economy, and today it remains a major part of the hospitality industry. Many persons from around the world have purchased a vacation home away from home in St. Martin, and the main objective of this legislation is to provide a sense of security and protection to vacation on St. Martin and for the overall protection of any mistakes from the past in resurfacing and potentially damaging the industry. Good sounding planning forms an integral part of our stabilization plan as a government and while infrastructural developments are necessary, these sort of initiatives 
that protect the industry are equally important. As Minister Vought <coughs> leading the charge in these two initiatives and committing and signing on the support for these two initiatives, I am honored to do so on behalf of country and people. This ends my updates for this morning. I look forward to any questions from the press at this time. I thank you. Thank you, Minister Johnson, for your opening remarks. At this time, I invite the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, the Honorable Wycliffe Smith, to address you. Minister Smith. Thank you very much, Ms. Roach. Greetings to all gathered here this morning, Honorable Minister, Department of Communications, members of the press, as well as the listening and viewing audiences via radio, television, and social media. Good morning, Sualiga. A school safety stakeholders meeting is being held at the University of St. Martin as we speak with stakeholders from the different school boards. This follows the meeting of stakeholders in the government and private sector last week. The aim is to develop advanced safety and emergency management in the education sector on St. Martin. A cornerstone for the achievement of this goal is the joint and participatory development of a school safety roadmap to advance school safety in the short, medium, and long term. We continue to push forward with our ministry's plans to ensure a better, safer environment for our children. The upcoming Youth Town Hall meeting. As we continue in our efforts to make a positive change in the lives of the few who have gone astray, the Student Support Services Division will be collaborating with the St. Martin Youth Parliament to host a special youth town hall meeting on the matter of fighting in schools, youths speak out. This session will be held at the University of St. Martin on Friday, December 7th, 2018, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. This event is targeted at youth only, inviting our young people to show up and speak out on this issue that affects them. Remember, positive thinking and right acting young people are the majority. So let us support them and give an audience to their voices. Listen to your children and let them know that you hear and that you care. Last week, I met with the staff of the St. Martin Vocational Training School. It was a productive discussion where the teachers were able to express their concerns and also presented some suggestions for the way forward. I'll be working with the board, uh, with the management and staff to improve the conditions for a better teaching learning environment and a safer space for all. The 2019 study financing applications. Uh, the division study financing hereby informs the general public that the application period for study financing from the government of St. Martin for the school year 2019-2020 is taking place during September 1st, 2018 through January 15, 2019. The study financing application is completely digital and online. Persons who are interested must go to their website at www.studyfinancing.sx and complete the application process there. The division study financing will subsequently schedule an appointment with the applicant to verify all the original documents. This week, copies of the Tourism Education for Caribbean e-learning series were distributed to representatives of all our public and subsidized schools. And the Minister of TIAT, Mr. Stuart Johnson, just made reference to 
those materials that were handed out to the various schools. This initiative was an, a collaborative effort of the Ministry of TIAT and the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport. Today, just a while ago, both Minister Johnson and I visited two public schools and made symbolic presentations to the students as well as conducted an interactive teaching session with the students. It is the intention that other persons in this ministry and also the St. Martin Tourist Bureau will continue this initiative. The series covers a range of topics related to tourism in the Caribbean that are geared towards children between the ages of 6 and 12 years of age. The St. Martin Volleyball Association 2018 tournament is now concluded after Cobrace defeated Guess What to claim the trophy of the males and Fearless Squad United seized the crown from Bush T Reload to be named the female champions. Congratulations to the winning teams and to all those who participated as well as the organizers of the tournament. The RBC Baseball and Softball Tournament continues at the Little League Stadium, so I'm encouraging you to go out and support them. And finally, our Thanksgiving service. In a few days, the 2018 hurricane season will officially come to an end. And as a nation, we must come together to say thanks to the Almighty God for having brought us through this season. With that in mind, I'd like to invite you this Sunday, December 2nd, 2018, to our National Ecumenical Thanksgiving Service. This will be held here at the Government Administration Building from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And you are all invited. I look forward to joining with you as we give thanks to the Almighty that we together have come this far. And with that, I conclude my presentation for today. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will be available for any relevant questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Smith, for your opening remarks. If you've just joined us, you are watching the live Council of Ministers press briefing. We now move on to the question and answer session. Stephen Cerulean of PJD2 Radio, you have the floor. Mrs. Johnson Smith, good morning. I'm going to pass on this round of question. Thank you. Good morning, Rilaika. Good morning, Minister Smith. Minister Johnson, my question is for Minister Johnson. You mentioned about the putting in of a somewhat of a boardwalk to ensure safety of cruise passengers uh, transiting from the port into Phillipsburg. What is the cost of that, and why are we thinking about doing this now in the season when it could have been done before? Well, you know, Alita, thank you for the question. It has always been on the books, and I think that's high time now that we prioritize this overall plan that has been there for quite some time. Just recently, we had um, informal discussions with uh, Doc Martin and Bobby's Marina. We are a part of those discussions. It came up in the presence in the Ministry of Romy as well um, that we look at solidifying this overall plan, the need for it. And, of course, within TIA, there is that ongoing congestion in front of the cruise terminal where there's persons that stand opposite the entryway and I looked at it even up to yesterday on board the Symphony of the Seas for the inaugural call and I said you know this really has to be prioritized the only way we're going to solve that situation in front of the cruise facility is by a structural solution so that is the reason why I've now um, upped the priority in terms of getting this boardwalk finalized. We have the commitment of Doc Martin as well as Bobby's Marina that indicated that their sections of what would be the full completion of the boardwalk is committed. The actual cost has not been 
updated as yet so we'll have to get back to you once we reach so far in that regard but to look at the safety of cruise passengers taking them off the main road in point blanche and getting them to move down from the cruise facility into town would be a better alleviation of the current situation i could cosmetically put controllers we could cosmetically get justice involved and put police officers and vacas and everybody there to control the situation as those officers move away the situation remains unless we find a structural solution and i believe that is the best approach forward so the need for this boardwalk in addition to the safety of our cruise passengers and to secure the livelihood of our people through tourism is also the aspect of ensuring that the structural improvements needed to stop that harassment that happens there take shape thank you thank you thank you minister johnson and lyndon brown of bcn tv you have the floor good morning good morning to the people of st martin and to the ministers that are here today uh, minister smith and the topic of the school violence, yesterday there was, al there was also a continuation of the, of the, f the school violence. Um, in your document, do you have any plan to deploy extraordinary police officers at various schools? Thank you, Mr. Brown, for your question. The uh, school aggression, school violence, certainly has the attention of the Ministry of Education. And uh, as you might have heard, even the Parliament uh, passed a motion asking the government and Minister of Education to uh, work on a plan. So we're very uh, much involved in getting that done, trying to meet especially the first deadline that the Parliament asked, and that is to present an inventory of what has been done so far. As far as placing extraordinary police, um, this is something that uh, I'm in discussion with, with the Minister of Justice, and so um, we, uh, we, we will be working together on uh, resolving uh, this issue in, in various ways in, in that respect also. But if we remember, Mr. Brown, if I may add in, as Minister Smith is working very diligently on making sure this plan is finalized, as well as with the different stakeholders, the primary responsibility is of parents. And I think that is where good manners, respect, a, a humble upbringing comes in, you know, in regards to... Um, public schools and in general as a school manager and a, and a teacher for over 10 years um, that was one of the basic rules we instilled even through school parents has their responsibility as well as schools to further support it so while the ministries are doing what they have to do it takes a community it takes a village to raise a child so everybody has to play their part as well it cannot be only one facet of our country but all areas have to play their part parents have to also lend their support in whatever initiatives whatever plans are taken to ensure that that um, children leave with the right manners at the end of the day, that they behave while they're in school, and of course that every other area um, plays their part to support that. So I'm sure Minister Smith is working diligently to ensure that this plan is finalized. He has the full support of the Council of Ministers as well, and of course the general public as well needs to continue to pledge their support in making sure this is all realized together. Thank you, Minister Smith. Thank you, Minister Johnson. Andrew Bishop of stmartinnews.com, you have the floor. Good morning to the ministers. I have one question. It was really for the Minister of Justice, but I know the ministers have collective um, responsibility for all ministries. Quite recently, there was the issue of the appointment of a director of the prisons. We learned that there were 10 candidates, uh, seven from Holland and three from St. Martin. But they chose three f out of Holland to be the director. They have three candidates that they are putting up. Who is this candidate? We'd like to know. And um, how soon will be the, the appointment um, being finalized? Um, thank you, Mr. Andrew. The Council of Ministers, yes, uh, will review. However, the advice has not reached the Council of Ministers yet, so you probably have more information than we do. Uh, it comes to the, the Council of Ministers and there it will be deliberated, and that hasn't happened yet. 
Thank you, Minister Smith. Alita Singh of the Daily Herald, you have the floor. Thanks again, Ulaika. Uh, my next question again is for uh, Minister Johnson. We have two hotel projects that are supposed to get started. One is spending from since 2016, which is the Pearl of China for the area of uh, Cahill um, um, Bel Air. And we also have the one of Sunwing for the former property of uh, Sunesta Great Bay. Can you give some indication as to what is happening with these projects starting construction wise? Well, the Pearl of China, of course, you know, has been a, a long-winded discussion within government, within even the campaign trail. So I think that speaks for itself why there isn't any Pearl as yet. So as it regards to um, Sunwing in particular, they're busy going through their procurement process with Vromi, making sure that they have all the building permits, all the necessary approvals to ensure that that starts within short. So they're going through that entire process. With lens over to the Ministry of Tiat, we've also been finalizing those commitments that they need from from TIAT and ensuring that within very short that the Sunwing group builds their Planet Hollywood Resort. Thank you, Minister Smith. Lyndon Brown, you have the floor. Sorry, Minister Johnson. Lyndon Brown, you have the floor. Okay, question to Minister Johnson. Um, over the past days, uh, a week, there were, there were ongoing unrest in Phillipsburg at the boardwalk. Um, Minister, there's a lot of people that work at the boardwalk, plotting hairs, massaging, and other. Do you have uh, a consensus for these people? Um, they want to work, but they are working without proper document. What, what would you have to say to these people? Well, of course, that requires, thank you for your question, Mr. Brown, that requires all ministries to be involved. So the Ministry of Justice would have to lend its support in regulating and ensuring that there is the necessary checks and balances throughout. So that would first have to happen. Is there harassment to tourists? Is there um, uh, uh, inaccessibility of certain businesses? Are people going over their, their bounds? What is permissible? So that entire discussion has to happen. I'm, I'm unsure of, of full unrest. I haven't seen any major report in that regard, but there has always been that discussion. We do need to regulate that. That has been an ongoing discussion before this government, before the previous government, before the governments, before that. So that's why I made mention of before in reference to the boardwalk, we have to do structural solutions. In Antigua, for instance, there is a designated area where persons are, are sectioned off, that they're only allowed to braid hair, that they're only allowed certain services that they can provide to persons visiting the beach. That's something maybe we could look at, but all of those areas and discussions are being discussed within the Ministry of Tiat. I don't believe in a quick fix. A quick fix only puts on a nice cosmetic image. It looks good for a, a quick photo op, and at the end of the day, it doesn't solve the problem. I'm trying with ongoing discussions with police officers, with persons from within the ministry, how we can find a long-term structural solution. And that, of course, would have to come from within other ministries. Justice will have to form part of those discussions, and we are going to have those discussions within short. And we are indeed closely monitoring the situation because the upcoming tourist season, as it continues to get in high gear, and we anticipate it to be a surely better number than last year's numbers, um, is something that we need to focus on collectively as a country and as a people, that we do what we have to do, and at the end of the day, the tourists leave having a well-rounded experience where there's hospitality, where there's good service, where they don't feel harassed. And I'm sure if I walk down the same boardwalk or in normal clothes, they might ask me to braid my hair. You know? So it all depends you know, at the end of the day how we control, how we do it, and we make sure that we do it properly and that everybody gets a fair chance to make an honest day's living, not at the expense of others, but at the expense of making sure they do it right. Thank you, Minister Johnson. Andrew Bishop. Thank you. Minister, I've been looking at the Sunesta Maho property for a few months now, and I see they're doing a lot of work there. Could you say when this property will be completed for the tourists? Well, Andrew, Mr. Andrew Bishop, thank you for coming. I do hope to see you here every week. It's so good to see journalism here blooming in its full glory this morning. So um, to answer your question in regards to Sunesta, the Ocean Point is to open by next month, December, and then in February, of course, would be the 
the Sonesta itself resort. So they're on track with their estimated timeline for completion. They're working around the clock to make sure that that happens. You know, the gaming floor of the Casino Royale is open. Um, most of the areas within the Maho village continue to open, continue to have that refurbishing work take place. And of course, they are committed to see that they get up and running with the ongoing commitments they have with conferences that are to be held, as well as bookings for carnival, the regatta and so on. And they've already advertised um, specials, as well as had a contest where a winner I saw on social media also received a complimentary stay um, at the resort. So they're on track so far, and they'll continue to work closely with the Ministry of TIA to update us on any progress in that regard. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Minister Johnson. We now move on to the final round. Alita Singh, you have the floor. Thanks again, Rolaika. Again, my question is for Minister Johnson. We do have another resort for which we have not heard uh, much about, uh, which is the uh, Westin Resort. Uh, has there been any communication with government as to when that resort may or will it ever reopen? Thank you, Alita, for your question. I'm actually scheduled within short to have a conference call with Mr. Young, which is the main principal in regards to Weston. Once that call is completed, I intend to give a full update to the people of St. Martin in what will be the ongoing developments at the reopening or future plans for Weston. As you know, the, the timeshare section is open with this, those areas and those units that have been open thus far. But of course, for government in particular, for the entire tourism sector, we do need brand hotels like that to continue to come on board and in a timely manner so we are going to have that conference call within short and then ex expect probably by next press briefing to have that update for the people of st martin further thank you lyndon brown question to minister smith minister smith um human 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 resources is necessary um a lot of time, um, people are undergoing post dynamical stress after Hurricane Ilma, uh, Minister Smith. Um, police officers, don't you think they need extra training? Because um, they train to combat. Because people are in pain. People are going through so much trouble, and sometimes they may not understand how to deal with matters. And it may turn out violent, violently. Do you? ever think about this topic? I'm very sure, uh, Mr. Brown, that uh, people have experienced uh, quite some traumatic uh, stress after the hurricane, and uh, they're, they're coping pretty well. I'm sure my colleague, the Minister of Justice, has been looking at that, and most likely will have some plans uh, that will help uh, the police officers and, and, and other officers uh, to be able to deal with um, the, the stress that they are faced with. So, you know, this would be a matter that I would uh, want to refer to my colleague, the Minister of Justice, and perhaps when he's here next time, you could ask him that question directly. But not to cut Thank you also. Thank you, Minister Smith. Andrew Bishop, you have the final question. Thank you very much. Minister Smith, with all that is going on, we understand that there's efforts by your ministry to ensure that there is no fighting. But I do not I cannot understand why we would blame it on the or give the parents responsibility. The children are at school more than they're at home with their parents, I think that the, the school have their responsibility to control the children, not have fighting, and have serious measures taken against the students who fight. Is there anything that could be done with these students, uh, like suspending them or um, doing something else to them to have this matter curbed? Uh, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Well, unfortunately, after the fight, that is not um, broadcasted. But the school uh, and the schools do carry out the necessary disciplinary measures uh, with regards to the students. Uh, police are called. Uh, so th it's measures are being taken. Unfortunately, we only see the fights on social media. But after the fights, uh, the schools uh, do have things under control. 
And Mr. Bishop, just to add on to your statement slash question, you know, parents' responsibility is just that. A school can suspend a child or give a disciplinary action, but if the child stays home unattended, unable to be spoken to in what is right, what is wrong, and again, the primary care of students and children comes from home. Um, I know you grew up in, in humble beginnings like myself, where respect was of paramount importance. We mustn't lose sight of that now with the generations to come. And that's why I reiterate the need for parental involvement as well as support. And coming from an education background that I have, I've seen firsthand where I can say that, where educators can justify saying that because you oftentimes discipline a child and at the end of the day, the parent doesn't even come to pick them up for that suspension. So an inspection department has their limitations in what they can do in terms of making sure that the parent is fully accountable. They can call them in, they can have the conversation, but inspection department has also had instances where parents have hung up the phone on the inspectors. So indeed, it is a, is a deep topic. It's, it could take up a whole press briefing, but the joint effort of school and parent is something that I champion. Both parents of the child should be involved as parents in general, as well as the school should also be involved in that close working relationship to ensure that the child has the right discipline and the right upbringing for our country. Thank you, Minister Johnson. Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, radio listeners, and online viewers, this brings us to the end of the live Council of Ministers press briefing for today. Wednesday, November 28th, 2018.